Let's look at Vendis, because something very interesting is happening right now. First off, read this disc disclaimer carefully, and do your good deed of today by liking and subscribing. I have put Vendis under economic signals, uh, specifically discount retail. The average performance here, it is you know, outperforming the S&P 500. If we look here, you can see that, you know, Vendis is fast food. And it is one of the higher performing of these uh, stocks. But not when it comes to the 52 week highs. Because there has recently been a pullback. But as far as buying low and selling high, that could potentially be interesting. So this is the company's website. They have, you know, order pickup and order delivery as such. Uh, they have been able, able to um, position themselves for this whole, you know, lockdown, uh, social distancing situation. But they also have, you know, those classical, you know, uh, restaurant-ish uh, locations. So here is the stuff they have, you know, croissants, biscuits, classics. Yeah, I think here is the entire menu. They also have, you know, fresh-made salads. Um, hence, uh, there is, you know, some healthier food alternatives. Let's go here to look at the seasonality for Wendy's, like that. And we want to look at the last 20 years. Now, you know, it is very 50-50, so there's no really strong seasonality that is, that is relevant for us uh, now. 58%, you know, it does mean that in March, there is a tendency for it to close higher than it opened. But if you really want to get into like strong, very tradable seasonality is definitively is November and December. Okay, uh, let's now look at the charts. So here we have, you know, the huge giga picture for, for Wendy's. We go way back to 1980. Something that is very interesting about this stock is that it has major bull markets and, and major bear markets uh, basically whenever it feels like it. You know, this was, you know, before the dot-com bubble and all of a sudden when this decided to have a bit of a bear market. Not just a bit either, I think this was, yeah, wow, minus um, 55-ish percent, that's uh, huge. Then a big bull market, then, you know, we do have the financial, you know, housing bubble and then we have a supreme crash. I mean, just measure this crash from the high to the low. Minus 87%, that is spectacular. And here, you know, we have the lockdown and it absolutely imploded. Hence, you know, based on what we see here in the charts, looking at all the history, when this, it can be hugely bullish, but also incredibly bearish. If you look here at the lead up to the housing bubble, you see this blue 100 week moving average, test, 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 test. It's a key moving average. It mattered then. Does it matter now? Test, 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 test. Well, here we do have the lockdown. But even actually uh, during this whole crash, we did interestingly test that moving average. And guess what? Guess what? We are doing that again. And we are seeing a bit of a bounce. Hence, when we look at the big picture history for Wendy's, there is good reason to be cautiously optimistic when it comes to the blue 100 week moving average. It simply has a very good track record of offering support. Hence, that is a point here for the bulls. Looking at accumulation distribution, it does show that there is a nice inflow of buyers here. And that is, you know, you know even though we have seen this pullback, the accumulation distribution has not really deteriorated that much. Interesting. Looking at RSI, you see that you know there have been times where RSI has been lower, but generally speaking, buyers tend to buy around this uh, zone. And there's an 81% positive correlation here with the S&P 500 long term. So here are the daily data, data points. Um, I mean, this looks interesting. Uh, we do see here that we are below the 200 day moving average. We do have a death cross here. But the, because uh, when they moves you know up and down in these uh, cycles you know relatively frequently, the moving averages are thrown around a bit, which creates a bunch of false uh, signals. 
Uh, interestingly, there is a minus 37% negative correlation here with the S&P 500. Okay. But yeah, I mean, it's interesting. You could argue that there is also some horizontal support around here. Also resistance. So yeah, let's explore further. Uh, here we have a Finvis. They draw this very clear horizontal lines. Support. Uh, looking at this descending trend line, they suggest that we are trying to break out of it. When we look here at the performance, you know, it's been rather mediocre. But that happens, you know, when you have a pullback, gains are lost. What I find especially interesting is the analyst price target. There's a bunch of, you know, big name analysts covering it. You get Goldman, you get Deutsche Bank, uh, North Coast, you know, the big names with Wedbush, you know, very well established uh, analyst firms. They suggest an average target price of $25.13, which suggests a 19, or actually over 19% upside from the current levels. That's a point for the bulls. The Wendy's here at Saks.com, they have a number three hold, so basically, you know, in the middle, C values, C growth, um, you know, B momentum. It is interesting. It is sort of like in the middle, basically. Uh, the dividend is 1.33%. Uh, it's decent. So you do get, you know, some reward for waiting. Okay, I, th I think that um, when we put here the evidence together, the theme, uh, discount retail is very interesting in the sense that um, you know, these are, you know, less expensive uh, places to buy stuff. Hence, uh, even when, you know, you have uh, some rough times uh, when, it, when it comes to the budget, you are more likely to go to Wendy's than one of those higher-end uh, restaurants. Uh, though fast food, it is, you know, um, you know, it is a discretionary expense. Hence, the more pure play, it, you know, uh, recession-proof uh, stocks would be something more like, you know, dollar tree. Uh, the seasonality was very 50-50, um, nothing very strong. We had to go, you know, wait uh, late into the year to see to see some really strong seasonality, but that is behind us now. Well, in front of us as well, but uh, still far off. Uh, looking at the charts, it, it was pretty clear that that 100-week moving average, which we have uh, bounced from just now, it has supported Wendy for a long time, which means that if it continues to support, then that's a clearly bullish signal. But if we do break below it and it becomes resistance, that is actually a very good signal to, to put on a bearish position because it has so much history, you know, of, um, as being like the arbiter basically of whether we have a bull or a bear uh, market for Wendy's. So, that, so that, that's rather interesting. Okay. If you look here at, uh, you know, Finvis, they did see this uh, support line, horizontal, that's interesting. The fundamentals uh, strongly, you know, suggested uh, upside. Hence, it is easier to make a bullish case than a bearish one for Wendy's. Um, they are in, you know, that uh, category of food that is less healthy. The good news for Wendy's is that the brand is flexible. You know, they do have, you know, this image of this uh, redhead uh, girl. I can easily see, you know, Wendy's transforming their company over time to add more and more healthy products to their portfolio. So there's nothing, there's nothing about, you know, the branding uh, about the punk, uh, around the company that limits their ability to be flexible, which is, you know, fantastic. And one of the fantastic things, you know, beyond that is that, as we saw, options are available. Hence, there are many, many strategies that you can get into uh, that uh, give you maximum flexibility.